Has someone ever told you that you're lazy? When stating that, was it with a negative connotation? I've been called lazy countless times throughout my life. Let's be honest, lazy people get a bad rap. The word laziness is attached to all things negative. If you are lazy, you are, by default, inefficient or unproductive. In this day and age, we all fear being lazy and strive to be a workaholic. But you know what I think? I think being a workaholic is overrated. It's stressful, time-consuming, and honestly, unnecessary. I'll be the first to admit it. I'm lazy, and I thrive on laziness. Yes, I am infected with laziness, and yes, you did hear me correctly, I am infected. This is because our society nowadays perceives laziness as a disease. We are taught from a young age to avoid any symptoms related to it and to keep away from people that may have it. If you open up a laptop right now and search for the word laziness, I can almost predict what you're going to see thousands of videos which will immediately pop up with titles such as how to cure laziness in three easy steps or how to get rid of laziness or even how to kill laziness we are so obsessed of, with getting rid of laziness that we don't even see its concealed advantage but I'll share it with you here's what I've learned I've learned that smart people actually use laziness as a resource instead of as a hindrance to productivity this is, of course, according to a study published in the Journal of Health Psychology. Yeah, I know. Surprising, right? So am I saying that you can survive in life and, and be a successful person and be lazy? Absolutely. But I'm not talking about all types of laziness, unfortunately. I'm certainly not talking about this type of laziness which includes lying in bed all day while watching TikToks, kind of lazy. I'm talking about efficiency. I'm talking about prioritizing the most important tasks and then coping with the issues that do rise up speedily. This is the right kind of lazy, the one that finds the quickest, simplest way to accomplish complicated tasks. Now, what exactly are the benefits of being the right kind of lazy? Well, I'm no business expert, but I do certainly know someone you all know as well. Bill Gates once said, I choose a lazy person to do a hard job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. Honestly, I don't think you could have said it any better. In business, the ability to swiftly create something can be a game changer. If you waste time ruminating over tiny details, you may find that the ship you were once hoping to board has sailed away long ago. So when you're the right kind of lazy, things progress faster than you could have ever imagined. No problem is ever too difficult to overcome. Too complicated. Well, perhaps we should make it simpler. Simple enough for a child to understand. Let's compare it to Legos. Imagine there is a Lego wall which you need to overcome in order to save the princess. Now an overthinker would just think hard of every ordinary possible way to solve this problem. Maybe by trying to get a ladder or just continuously trying to jump up. However, a lazy person knows that this wall is just made up of small little bricks and so they can just break through it. Lazy people understand the anatomy of a challenge. The big problems are made up of small problems which have rolled up into a snowball. With that in mind, they never feel overwhelmed by any problem, no matter how daunting it may seem. They're more likely to be strategic thinkers and come up with smart shortcuts which will save money and time and contribute new innovative ideas to the companies. But why are they so creative? Neuroscience and research done in the Department of Psychological and Brain Sciences in the University of California and in Leipzig have shown that when we're lazy and procrastinate, there's so much more going on in our brains than just putting off doing something and having that guilt inside of your head. I like to call it the everlasting jigsaw puzzle. And here's why. When you put off doing this task, you essentially have that guilt that keeps on constantly reminding you to do that. Well, that is what activates this puzzle. The puzzle is exactly like this one, made for toddlers, where there are shapes, cut off of shapes, and you need to try and fit it in. 
that's what happens in our brains. And it goes on at a supersonic speed, almost at a subconscious level. Everything we see, read, and experience becomes a potential piece of that jigsaw. We, in our brains, we are rapidly examining every little piece, turning them around and trying to fit them in. When that piece finally fits in, all of a sudden, we, we have a new idea or strategy, or maybe just the perfect solution for that problem. From there on, all of the pieces start to come together. Have you ever put off doing something? Then when you actually get to it, it, it ends up being the best thing you ever could have done. Well, that's because of that jigsaw. Try to remember the last time you had an actual creative idea or innovative solution. Chances are, you weren't trying to. You were probably taking a walk or a shower or sitting on a bench. And then, like a flash of lightning, a brilliant idea struck. Throughout history, there have been many examples of people who had this quality, who many have forgotten. Well, most think of Ben Franklin as a hard worker, it should be known he once said, I am, and I quote, the laziest man in the world. Although, it, although a lazy person may not have the drive to work nonstop, it doesn't mean they don't have the ambition. Franklin was lazy, thus he invented ways to make life easier. He wanted to do less work. It is exactly this idea of embracing laziness and using it to your advantage. Even Einstein used to say that laziness is a great tool for developing your imagination and creativity. Although laziness is good, not all types of laziness are good. Some types of lazy people are just serial procrastinators who put, who put doing things off until the last minute then present subpar work. This kind of laziness will waste both your time and your money. Instead, you should seek to be a practical person who will be creative and intelligent and not overthink things. These are the people who propel forward. When searching for the right lazy characteristics, remember to have these two. The first, perspective. The right kind of lazy person will look for an outside-of-the-box solution, will look for a creative solution instead of hitting their heads against the wall, trying to find an ordinary way to solve a complex problem. The second one is, is, <laughs> sorry, is persistence. The wrong kind of lazy person will persistently look for ways to avoid doing the work, whilst the right kind of lazy person will persistently look for ways to speed up their jobs and ease it without sacrificing quality. Making sure you have these two Ps will ensure you never fall behind. And as more and more challenges in our lives and society demand an innovative approach, and, we are, and this blind focus on productivity is the enemy of innovation and creativity. Moreover, there are so many challenges which we humans have faced for ages that are not going to be solved using conventional strategies. We need to unleash our creativity, find new effective ways to break through these barriers, these Lego walls, and get to our princesses. So the next time you feel bad about being lazy, don't. Because if we want to change our world for the better, to innovate for the future, we all need to learn how to be lazy. So stop being so busy. Allow your brain to relax. Stop obsessing over the, over the news and detach yourself from the workaholic mindset. Then go, take that walk, watch some Netflix, listen to some music. It might just be the best thing you'll do all day.